All right. Um, you you were advisor to uh, two popes. That's right. Uh, tonight there is news that just hours ago, mm -hmm. uh, for the first time in living human memory, actually about 150 years, they That's estimate. A very good way of putting it, in living memory. Yeah. You know, there has been, um, uh, well, it says a member of the Pope's elite Swiss Guard apparently shot and killed his new commander mm -hmm. and the official's wife Monday night, mm -hmm. then turned the gun on himself all within Vatican walls. Uh, a next-door neighbor found the bodies. Um, uh, the Vatican spokesman said this was all done. Uh, in what he can he he called quote a moment of madness mm -hmm. end quote mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what in the world could be going on in the Vatican uh, well I'll tell you Art a word to the wise with anything like this that involves the inner life of a uh, institution which has now uh, centuries-old precautions against publicity and being known what really goes on there, one has to be very, very circumspect and careful about any details released about uh, something that they can't hide very well. It's very hard to hide the death of two officials yes. and uh, uh, the wife of one you can't hide that very well. Well, it's not being uh, hidden. Believe me, it's a lead news item. I've got I the know. letters. They can't do anything about it. But the, as to the details, the devil is in the details, as they say. And we don't... The details have not been published. We do not know really what happened, except that three people are dead. And one apparently, according to the official account, by his own hand. Um... A moment of insanity, momento of insania, yes, that's one way of, of covering the issue. It was a general blanket. And a very careful statement, a moment of madness. Yes, it's a very, it's a, it's a, it's a nice way of conceiving, yes, there was a dreadful thing. It, what it does indicate is this, the murder, the killing of another human being, the shedding of blood, uh, is one of the sure signs of demonic interference. But in the Vatican? Well... Uh, yeah, I mean, is that, is, that, is, that, is that a likely target in place, or is that an unlikely target in no, place? No, no. Remember, uh, just two popes ago, one pope said, Paul VI was his name, he died in 1978, uh, and I knew him very well. Uh, he said, the smoke of Satan has entered the sanctuary. And... Uh, um, I think you remember a book of mine published in 1996 describing a, a Luciferian ceremony within the precincts of the Vatican. And remember that the, uh, the Vatican, the Pope, has in his entourage, he has a chief exorcist, he, we all know him, Father Gabriel Amort, and there are eight um, employees, exorcists, I work both in Rome and Milan and uh, and Turin. Um, so there's a there is a lot there. What we've just seen, the crack has opened, and we've seen one effect of it. Put it like this, Art. For somebody in my position, from what I know of how this institutional organization works, it is impossible that there be a triple death by violence within the precincts of the Vatican, amongst Vatican people, unless it is impossible that should happen without demonic interference. Because the thing is so, should be in principle, so sacrosanct and so preserved from such activity that it might take place outside, but not inside. What uh, The Vatican is its own sovereign state, is it Absolutely. not? Absolutely. So that uh, the investigation, the um, the details of it, the um, suspects, the people who would be caught, and then I have no idea what would happen in, in the Vatican uh, if they came up with suspects. How are, how are things handled in the Vatican? Oh, they have their own way of dealing with that. They have their own way of dealing with that. 
So the so uh, Italian fire. Italian law in no way bears on the Vatican. No, none. Now, normally, if they, uh, let's take a banal example. If somebody is found inside in the Vatican Museum trying to uh, make off with a, a valuable chalice or something, yes, they, they of course, uh, put him in the Vatican prison, which they have, and they call in the police. And he's, you know, a normal thing like that. And then they are turned over to Italian authorities. Yes, they are. Uh, normal, uh, normal evil. <laughs> normal violence. Normal evil, normal. yeah. <laughs> normal. But anything which... Uh, really comes from, from deep within and betrays the presence of the, betrays that footprint again. And this does, uh, that's dealt with in camera and dealt with away from the prying eyes of the media and of the world. Uh, they, they, it's impossible for them to hide everything. And very early on, we all knew, very early on in this incident, we all knew that uh, something had happened, but uh, the, the race in the various news media, uh, the CNN, NBC, ABC, CBS, to try and get some substance to what they were hearing was fantastic to watch. Uh, of course, nothing came out because the Vatican has means of choking off everything. Well, um, the pressure on the Vatican from the media over this is going to be big. It is going to be big. And, and do you think they will just uh, hold their silence? They will, but there's always the inevitable, the inevitable tipster, the inevitable sale of news. And that's what will probably happen. Uh, I would imagine that Catholics all over the world, uh, which look to the Vatican uh, spiritually... Yeah will want to know if uh, their spiritual capital is under siege. That's right. And uh, then, you know, Art, there's another consideration which is painful for me anyway, because I'm a papist, as you know, in spite of the fact that I have my, my criticisms of the popes, I've served with them, the popes I didn't serve with, and I have strong critiques of the present Holy Father, who is my pope. But I have strong critiques of it. But on another plane, this is a dreadful slap in the face to John Paul II. Because this happened under his watch. No matter how you cut it, he's the boss. He's in charge. So really, it works in the Vatican like it works in Washington. Oh, uh, yes, it does. Good oh, economic yes. times, oh, the yes, president gets does. the credit. Bad economic times, the oh, president yes. gets the blame. Exactly. Oh, yes, it does. And you see... Um, it does reflect on his administration. It does reflect on the spirit he has installed now for almost 20 years you know, as Pope. And uh, a lot of us have been saying all along, for a long time, uh, there is a spirit of secularization uh, going on uh, in John Paul II's Vatican, which uh, makes possible such incidents as this and other incidents too, which have not come to light. God. So it's, uh, it's, it must be a cause of great anguish to John Paul too. Uh, um, I'm, I'm certain anguish. that is so. But you're, you're you're saying even the the what I would think of as relatively small moves because it looked uh, very non secular when I was there. Uh, but these small moves would invite in the possibility you're saying of what has happened. Yes, they do. They do. They, they, the old Italian saying, which I can't quote any longer in the Italian because I forget it, is that any crack in the wall and the wisp of Satan enters, the wisp of evil enters. And um, th there is a process of, a gentle process. The intention is ecumenical. The intention is to be like the rest of the world. The intention is not to be so remote. But there is a, 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 has been a tendency in the pontificate of John Paul II to be so accommodating. Uh, well, for, give, let me give you one example. Um, no pope, believe you me, Art, no, no pope of the 263 popes before him would have sat down with the leader of the voodoo priests of Haiti, which he did. He and, did. And he said to them, look, uh, Father Maurice, I think Maurice was the name of the head of the voodoo expert uh, priest in Haiti. Look, um, we are interested in your religion and you should be interested in our religion. I mean, <laughs> that is something which is unheard of in Catholic tradition. Uh, or uh, John Paul II himself has gone to a secret island off, 
of the Malagasy Republic, where he drank from the sacred water, from the sacred um, fountain of the god, of the local god worshipped. Uh, that is, or he sat in in a in a phallus shaped chair in uh, India and had the mark of uh, Kali put on his forehead. Oh my God, um, Father, hold that on. That is something which you know uh, violates. Oh, I. <laughs> Oh, listen, are you suggesting that the present Pope uh, may himself be under... Um... No, I'm suggesting that he has drawn on himself a demonic attention, which he could have avoided. All right, uh, Father Malachi Martin, hold it right there. That's plenty, thank you, to digest for the moment. From the high desert, this is Coast to Coast AM.